Today we're going to be trying to fish with the Carolina rig and I'm going to explain to you how I like to fish the Carolina rig, how I rig it up and some techniques that I find work for me. But before we do that, I want to show you a fun little toy that I just got. And I don't know if you can see here, but this is an e-bike and I'm going to pull this out of my trunk and set it up real quick for you guys. But I want to show you this e-bike in the in the trunk because number one i had a minivan but we had to trash it last year it was giving us so much problem problems had to dump like over six grand into it so we no longer have a larger vehicle this is my fishing car 2007 honda accord with almost 200,000 miles on it but it fits the e-bike so we're going to go ahead and pull it out i want to show it to you real quick and then we are going to try to log as many miles as possible uh, with the bike on the sand try to catch as many fish as possible and i'll explain the carolina rig to you along the way so before we do anything else we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. And this bike is, an, it's from Engway. So thank you Engway to sending this out for me. It's about 50 pounds. Whoa. And I really want to just show you guys uh, this thing as it's folded up um, and setting it up. And all it is is you just pull it right along. Ooh, I've only ridden this a few times, so. But this is the Engway bike. Rawr. And it's folded up, and then once you once you extend it out, you just latch it, and that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and put the kickstand down. Where's my kickstand? So this is the Engway L20 uh, version 2.0. So they just launched this in the beginning of March, and they sent this to me just a little while ago to kind of show an action. I've never owned an e-bike. I don't know anything about an e-bike, so I'm not gonna to try to get too nerdy with that kind of stuff. All I wanna do is the functionality. Does this work for me when it comes to fishing? And uh, hopefully it will, we're gonna find out. But I really, really am excited because I've always wanted an e-bike, but now that I don't have a minivan, it was not really a consideration. I mean, I, didn't, I guess I can get a, a, a mount on the car, but. I don't really feel like doing that, but this thing folds down. Go and snap it in place. Got the seat here. And this thing is adjustable, obviously. And line it up. Lock it in place. This is where the battery goes. And this is the battery. Uh, supposedly, if you ride this on the lowest setting, it can give you like 90 miles. Obviously, if you have an e-bike, you're not going to be using it on the, the lowest setting. So I don't know what how, the max output of this bad boy is. I think that's it. Okay. Put that in. Um, but yeah, so this is actually kind of, I feel like, I don't know if this is really made, is optimal for the beach. Probably not. But the good thing about it is it's smaller and a smaller profile. So it works for me because uh, anything bigger, there's no way I would be able to get it in here. So with this vehicle, you just need to put the key in that locked it into place. And then I think we just move it over once that locks the key in and then we can start the bike. But now that we have the key in place right here, there's a power button. Uh, is it this one? yeah so we power it on as you can see uh i've been test riding it i've logged 12.2 miles on this thing just riding it around the city before i felt safe bringing it onto the beach i'm starting at 12.2 miles today let's see how much i log that's a little nice loud bell actually and front and rear brakes and supposedly this thing can go about 28 miles an hour at the top speed i am so excited so flip these pedals up and we are literally ready to ride, guys. In other news, I actually forgot my backpack, which has my other camera. So thankfully, um, I got this brand new Insta360 that I don't know how to use. We're gonna be filming this portion with that. I was lucky enough to prepare some of my Carolina rig stuff. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get on the sand. I'm gonna show you guys how this works. Skinnier tires, they're three inch tires. Bigger fat tires will be four inches. So this isn't exactly like your you know, riding in the sand optimized vehicle, but 
Um, I think there's plenty of hard, hard pack. I just checked it out before filming. And so I think we'll be able to ride up and down the coast. That's the goal anyways. All right, before we take off, let me show you guys what I got. Because I don't have a backpack, I'm glad I packed super light. I have everything I need in this tiny little box here. We're starting off with a three quarter ounce on the Carolina rig. I'll talk to you guys that in a second, but I got the barrel swivels, uh, orange beads, some hooks and weights, big lot baits. This is an unreleased, unreleased, but I'm actually really, 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 really excited about these. I'll show you guys those. And then these are honey badger baits. And I think if you have been done any Carolina rig fishing in uh, Southern California, you probably know about these. So I'm gonna use all three of those. Thank you to Glenn and Josh for allowing me to fish your baits. And then six pound Opsin fluorocarbon leader. And I'm just gonna stick these in my pocket and then we're gonna roll. I don't know how many uh, miles I'm gonna be able to log holding uh, Insta360 brand new, first time using it, and a rod in my hand. So I kind of screwed things up today, but I think it'll also showcase uh, how possible it is to fish on the sand with an e-bike. And don't be jealous of my Crocs, guys. You guys know it's so cool. <laughs> Thought it would be the easiest way to get around today. You can hit on my Crocs all you want. You know you love them. They're so ugly. All right, we're gonna walk this over the berm here. And I wasn't planning on riding this part. Uh, there's a part right over here that I was hoping we're at a sucking out low tide. Okay, we're gonna see if we can ride on this. We might not be able to, it might be too soft. I don't know. Put this on level two. And there's a nice structure right here already. There's a gentleman already fishing here. I would fish it. Oh, does it work? Oh, it works. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Oh, we're rolling. Hey, not bad. Okay. So we're gonna try to, oh, it's pretty slippery, guys. Oh, man. I have it on pedal assist. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna eat it, dude. Oh, shoot. It's too soft. If we could find some firmer sand, we could probably fix that. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just ride on the sidewalk for now. Okay. So I wanna work north and try to find some structure up that way. And we're just going real slow at a less than 10 miles an hour, but you can bump it up to three and we jump up and we're going 15. Level four will take us up to 20. And if you wanna go that full 28, you can clock it, you can make that happen. But we're gonna be talking about the uh, Carolina rig today. Like I said, I'm using the Rockaway. It, the SP stands for Surf Perch. They specifically made the Rockaway SP for the Southern California fishery for our local small little critters. I got that on 15 pound braid, six pound ops and fluorocarbon. And I'm starting off with a three quarter ounce egg sinker. Now this rod is rated only to five eighths ounce, but I feel pretty confident with this rod that you can go past the max lion lure rating on this. And so just, I always start a little bit heavier uh, to make sure that I can have control. I brought some lighter sinkers too, if needed. And we're sucking out today to, not quite to zero, I think like a 1.5 or something. And that's gonna bottom out in about an hour. You know, these beaches typically for me seem to fish best at a higher tide, but that might not always be the case. And I realize that I'm riding my bike the wrong way right now. So I've already logged a mile, 13.2 miles, cruising at 15 miles an hour. So we're gonna try to log as many miles as we can on this thing. And the good thing about this is if you do run under battery, it's still a bike, so it's all right. So we're gonna go ahead and see. Let's just go ahead and see how we're on the sand here now. Let's see how far, how far I can go without getting stuck. It's gonna be real soon now. Yeah, we're going. I'll take even this much, man. Oh, eat it. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't gonna work. So we're just gonna try to get out over to the hardback, take a look at the sand here. And the goal is to find harder sand. We'll check it out here. Rolling up to the beach. Let's see what we can find. Looks like we've got some bait and weight guys here already. I see 
real high sandbar kind of running north and south but our front trough could very well hold fish oh yeah this front trough yeah we can work this front trough yeah so there's this front trough that's still filled in could definitely hold fish we can make our way up north but uh looks pretty sucked out north so there's a trough that starts around here i think we can work it looks like it kind of extends out to maybe the beginnings of a cut all right so there's a nice little trough in front of us so we're going to give it a few shots again i want to try to catch i just want to pick off fish at multiple locations but we're throwing the carolina rig again like i said uh we're throwing the akuma rockaway sp it's rated six to 12 pounds and three sixteenth to a half ounce the way i've got that i've got a 15 pound spooled up with 15 pound braid on my itx cb and i got a three quarter ounce egg sinker yes i'm overloading the rod but i did that on purpose because i just want to see how the rod handles it i feel a lot more confident um, with these rods and they're still super super sensitive and we got about uh probably two feet of six pound fluorocarbon leader with a size six owner mosquito hook and this is from big lout baits and it's brand new and he just started pouring them he doesn't even have a name for him yet but super, super small, really, really small profile. It's kind of a creature bait style, um, but really, really small. And I really like that when we're kind of chasing these critters. All right, so we're gonna start off with this and we got some other options all in the motor oil color. And we're gonna try to make a few casts. Let's go try to catch some fish. And so right in front of me, it looks like this is almost opens out into a cut. So I think, I, I'm pretty sure fish are holding in here, but we're gonna have to find out. All right, so with the Carolina rig, trying to cast out and you can even dead stick it or do a slow retrieve. Uh, personally, what I like to do is I like to pop this thing in and a lot of times fish will bite on the drop. Oh, first cast on the eight foot six rod. Got it over the little swell coming through. So we're not too far. Oh, sensitive. Wow, I really like the feel of this rod. It's soft but it's not noodly, if that's even possible. But yeah, just a nice slow retrieve after it settles to the bottom. I'm just slow retrieving and then I like to kick it up off the bottom, let that sinker kick up some sand and let that little creature bait rise and fall. All right, nothing doing here, guys. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take it back and we'll find another spot. All right, guys, I'm actually writing. It's, it's soft and it's not uh i would say ideal like we're kind of teetering on the edge of it being too soft but i'm riding it's kind of slipping around a little bit but going like eight miles an hour and kind of just cruising along and trying to find another spot here it's super windy all right new spot a little flatter still this little front front structure a little long running trough uh see if we can find anything swimming through it i'm kind of lowering my rod tip because uh it's you know the the wind is going to really bow out my line so it's going to make it really really challenging i didn't want to go out yesterday because the wind was like 25 knots and today is supposed to be way better but it's not oh i'm getting bit right now yes fish on fish on i was giving up on my cast and i got bit on this little creature bait um from big loud baits and what do we got here a little perch a little orange county size perch right here right like i said a lot of times it'll be right in the front of that hard pack and uh, perfect man i love this rod man it's super sensitive and very very nice so de-hook this guy little orange county southern california perch nothing like the central coast but we'll go ahead and let this guy go thank you buddy but good to find something it's right up here right up in the hard pack here love this rod so far and really love this reel. Um, it's the uh, ITX CB um, JDM reel for, I'm not really big on just cause it says JDM, but for those of you guys that are into that kind of thing, uh, designed in Japan for Akuma. All right guys, I found a uh, firmer sand and I'm making pretty good distance here. 15 miles an hour and what a, a difference hard sand makes <laughs> this is awesome 
don't want to go too fast but i'm cruising here at 14. gonna pass for all the way through this stuff because uh it doesn't look like there's much going on a lot of flat sand and with the tide so sucked out if there is any structure up close uh probably not going to be the best so nothing doing, but I see some holes and holes in some structure down there. Maybe a quarter mile down. I'm just gonna ride it straight down. And that's I think that's where I parked, because I did see that structure when I parked. But real, real hard packed sand. Very easy to to, to pedal through this. No issues. Alright, so having a blast here and uh, now we gotta try to find some more fish. Probably went up maybe half mile to a mile, maybe a mile. Um, I'm at a completely different beach now. It was totally flat and then a new trough formed. Yeah, if you look all the way down there, it's completely flat, but it kind of, this is the start of a trough. So, and just cast and see if anything's swimming in here. But yeah, see right where those water, that, that wave crashed? That's the lip. So, a lot of times, these little surf perch and other critters will be right at the edge of that lip. And uh, that's typically where, you know, a lot of the long time uh, SoCal lightline fishermen will fish is that little lip. And, you know, a lot of times they'll be real small fish. Other times there'll be some big ones swimming through there. We're at four bars. We dropped the bar. Three and a half miles I've, I've driven this thing. And, uh, yeah, you're going to lose a lot more juice doing this on the sand. I'm using the pedal assist, but also using the throttle. So you're going to drain the battery a lot faster. But well, I mean, that's part of it, too. I want to see under these kind of conditions on this single battery, realistically, you know, what you can plan for and what you can assume on doing safely. It's a little drop off here. I think I think this transition is good. It's super flat right there and it drops off right over here. So we'll give this a shot. Real quick though, real quick. Yeah, lip right here. Super flat right here and it transitions into the beginning of a trough. So a lot of questions on how do I find structure? Where do I fish? You guys see what I'm doing and you just make guesses, man. And just because you find a good piece of structure doesn't mean it's gonna be loaded, but it could be. And the only way you find out is by fishing it. And if you fish it and it doesn't work out after several casts, you know, I wouldn't spend too much time, especially on the Carolina rig. You know, stuff like big loud baits and honey badger baits, those are proven little soft plastics, little grubs. You know, they're, you know it's gonna get eaten. So um, just trust that if fish are around, you're gonna get bit. All the stuff that looks like the possibility of fish holding and a fish holding, then you are right. And if fish are not holding, doesn't mean you were wrong. Just means that fish weren't holding there at that particular time. All right, so this is why I was saying low tide might not be best for this stretch of sand. This is a perfect example. If you look at this right here, see this lip? See right here? This is a little ledge. And when the water's higher, like maybe at a two, three, or four foot, you can fish this. You wouldn't be able to see it but uh, water will be running way past here. It'd be high enough where fish would be piled in here. Right now I'm looking out there because that's where I would probably want to fish, but I can't reach it because it's not low enough. But right here is where you catch a bunch of surf perch uh, when the water's a little higher. And it's also where you could probably sight fish Corbina. Corbina would come in, you could see their backs out of the water, but this entire area is going to be like a trough when the water's higher perfect place to fish just not right now so um just shows you how important timing is but still really good to see it's all about the structure you see the little lip right here right there and the water's passing over it yeah this is what you want to see so you know if you're low tide scouting you you kind of mark this area and come back when maybe it's a little bit of a higher tide mid to high tide and could maybe have a good session so i thought i could make a cast but it's not really good i'm not going to get bit here holy cow one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rods. My goodness. This must be the fish zone. <laughs> I 
think I started at like 11 miles or was it 12 miles? I'll have to check. We're at 17.1, so what, it's been about five to six miles. And we're down to three bars, so we already lost the second bar and uh, less than 10 miles. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll ride this thing until it dies or at least get closer to it. Dude, fishing sucks so far, but this is awesome. I'm having an absolute blast. This is pretty cool, man. I mean, this has been good stretch where the sand is just hard and no problem pedaling. So I was in an area where the sand was way too soft and I was a little worried like, yeah, man, these, this bike is way too light and the tires are too small, man, but this works. This is high enough where something could be holding. I just, I don't know. I think I want to be a little bit more picky now. All right, so I took a little stumble. The sand got real soft. Took a little stumble and I had to drop the rod into the sand and uh, look at my reel. And I'm not bummed. I want this to happen. You know, my job is to test this gear and see if I can fully recommend it. I got sand all over the place. Uh, I, I'm gonna head up over to the sidewalk now, stop at the nearest restroom and uh, we'll wash this off at a, a, over a shower and uh, hopefully it'll be okay. So I really want to know how this reel holds up to stuff like this. Um, obviously it hasn't dipped in salt water yet, but stuff like this is part of surf fishing, man. Uh, if you surf fish hard, stuff happens. All right, so I'm at the shower now. And like I said, I dunked this thing in the sand. So what I'm gonna do is just rinse with fresh water. Just rinse it off. That's it. I'm not gonna do much else than that. And we'll see, you know, time will tell but I'll let you guys know if I see any grittiness or anything like that. All right, guys, I'm having uh, issues with my GoPro, so I don't know what's filming and what's not filming. We're gonna try to keep fishing until we can get some more fish. We're gonna have a thousand last casts. <laughs> well, <clears throat> fishing was uh, definitely a bummer today, but we're gonna go ahead and wind this up. I'm down to one bar on my battery, so uh, definitely uh, a little disappointed with the uh, battery life on this thing creeping on I think I've gone a solid nine miles and a lot of it on soft sand or rideable sand so I think I can go probably a couple more miles easy I'm at least a mile away from my car maybe two miles away from my car so um, hopefully we'll get there I think we will um, got to hit some good structure but again uh, timing is everything and you know I think when it comes to finding a bite, a lot of that structure, um, I actually believe would be holding if I came back later in the day when it filled in a little better. We fished enough stretch sand where we could have found something wide open. You know, I fished good structure over that 10 mile course. I cast into a lot of those holes, just wasn't happening today. So it's all good, man, it's fishing, but I had so much fun doing this and we are definitely gonna do it again. Definite benefit of this bike is the portability and really how easy it is just to fold it up and stick it in the trunk and take it out. So we'll definitely give it another go here, come back when, you know, the fishing is a little better. Every day is different, you know, from what I see of the guys that fish down here on a daily, literally one day they'll catch, you know, 15, 20 fish, and the next day they either skunk or catch one or two. So seems like today was one of those one or two days. I got my one, <laughs> uh, very grateful for that one. And uh, we'll definitely, do it again and we'll definitely take this bike out again for sure this is super awesome so thank you to Angway, and i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video it's a little different you know hopefully next time there'll be more fish so until next one guys tie lines